Hello everyone, this is the YouTube video presentation of our attempt um, to build a geodesic dome. Um, we built this dome as part of a project for a zigzag hostel in Lima, Peru. I worked on this with uh, my buddy Heiko. So we're a two-person team. Well, and sometimes we also had uh, a third friend assist us. We decided to follow the recommendations of Paul Robinson whose videos we saw on YouTube and which were very helpful. So this is our dome and this video is going to be a little bit about how we built the dome like some of the techniques we used but it's also mostly going to be about um, things we learned along the way. So, that... so our, our geodesic dome had a radius of about 1.3 um, meters. So, um, and this is the the 2V dome calculation tool that we used, which you can find at geo-dome.co.uk. And um, yeah, this calculation tool spits out all the information you need once you've decided on a radius. Um, so let's say one point. I already kind of gave this in earlier, but I'll just do it again so you can see. So. It'll calculate it and then it will tell you the strut lengths. So here you have two different strut lengths. Uh, strut A is 71 centimeters, strut B 80 centimeters, um, et cetera, et cetera. It tells you how many different types of struts you need, um, of, well, how many of each. It tells you the number of panels you'll need, how to assemble them the beveling angles, etc. So this was our main calculation tool. Didn't really need anything else. This is the wood that we started out with. So it's uh, two centimeters by four centimeters. We, we cut them in half at a 74 degree angle or 73 degree angle to end up with two beveled struts. Um, the struts are pretty weak for the size dome that we wanted to make. So definitely make sure that if you're building like a, a 2.5 diameter, uh, 2.5 meter diameter dome or anything bigger, you want to probably use um, something twice as big as this. If you go with something like 50% bigger, that might, might be good enough as well. So uh, this is one of the triangles we created. And um, here you can see one of the problems we encountered was when we screwed them together uh, using an, uh, a battery powered drill, um, sometimes we would get too close to the edge and uh, we would basically crack the wood. Um, so a couple of times we had to redo that and of course every time you do that, that weakens the wood. Another issue we had were, was uh, these weak spots, so on a couple different triangles, um, this part would break um, if you put a little bit of weight on it. You see that it cracked, broke all the way through, so we had to fix that. We had another one, another triangle over here, and um, yeah, so. So just to give you an overview of the tools we used, we used um, the Bosch saw to cut the angles and to bevel the struts and uh, we used a drill we actually had two drills one was battery powered so that was good because we didn't have to drag the cord behind us um, to drill holes for the bolts and to screw the struts together and we used the handsaw to shorten the struts according to the length we needed them these were the screws we used to connect the struts with each other. So you can see here we just drilled through one side and uh, yeah that's how we attach the struts to each other. It doesn't go that far into the next strut um, which also caused problems for us because uh, some of the triangles came apart so you want to make sure you have a, a good length. These were the bolts we used to bolt the triangles together. So you can see here you just basically want to make sure that they they go through the two struts. 
So this was what we used to bevel the struts. Um, we basically just kind of fixed the, the saw here using some guides and we had like a little track that we pushed the pieces of wood through. So basically it would, wood would go through here and um, yeah we made sure that the saw was at the correct angle that we needed for the beveling and then we just basically pass it through. So it was a pretty effective way to get consistent results. So this was another workstation which we used um, to cut the angles into the struts. So if you see here, the strut has an angle right here, right? So this is what we cut using this. So after the beveling, um, we had a couple, we had a bunch of struts. Um, which looked more or less like this, right? Beveled. And then what we needed to do was we needed to cut an angle into them, right? So um, the triangles, there's, there's two different types of triangles. There's one that's isosceles and there's one that's equilateral or equilateral. And um, so we had to cut um, some struts at a 70 degree angle others at a 55 degree angle and others at a 60 degree angle, which we did actually on a different workstation. But on this workstation, we did 55 and 70, as you can see. So we made sure that uh, this triangle had the correct angle right here. And basically we just held this strut, one of us held the strut against um, this guide while the other person basically rode with the electric saw along this guide and basically just cut off the corner like this, right? So this guide basically made sure that we maintained the correct angle. So that way we were able to get uh, very consistent um, results. And this was the guide we used for getting the 60 degree angles, right? So we would just take the strut and put it right there and then ride with the electric saw along this guide to cut the right angle. Whenever we wanted to change the station, we could just unscrew these. We had these screwed in here at a couple different spots into our workbench, but when we didn't need them anymore, we'd just take them off and uh, put the next workbench we needed on here and screw that in for extra stability. So one thing that was um, different about our geodesic dome from Paul Robinson's dome is that we wanted to be able to disassemble the dome afterwards um, fairly easily. So we used bolts instead of screws, which made the uh, which made everything a little bit more complicated because we had to drill holes um, in the correct spots and use a numbering system. So if you don't have to disassemble it, then you can save yourself a lot of work. So to give you an idea of how um, we drilled the holes for the bolts, um, first we put a, a, a triangle on our jig, and then we would take a second triangle and hold it so that these sides lined up, and uh, from then we drill a hole through there and then we would immediately assign them a number so in this case it was C3 so we knew that basically these holes would match with each other and then afterwards we could put them together in that order. Another thing you want to make sure of is that you have enough space to work with so we didn't really have enough space because we were working here in this uh, garage area and yeah this little courtyard in front of the hostel and that made everything a little bit more difficult because we had to build it in parts and we couldn't really lay out the triangles we had a bunch of triangles just flying around in piles and then every time we were looking for a triangle we had to kind of go look for it in the piles so if you have more space to work with to lay out the triangles you know in, in the right order that that's definitely an advantage 
So that was a, a brief summary of of our geodesic dome project. We learned a lot along the way. It was both easier and harder than we expected. And uh, yeah, um, I hope you guys are successful with your geodesic dome projects. Thanks for watching.